Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us for our first Quick Tip Thursday webinar. Today's topic is going to be managing noise and night images. Tip number one is get to know your manual adjustments, especially your black level correction slider. Tip two, don't be afraid to add grain back into your image. And tip three, take advantage of the ability to save your presets, especially when you have many images taken with the same settings and camera. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is our first image. As you can tell, it's very, very noisy. And this image was taken about 10 minutes after dusk. There was still some light in the sky, but the sun had set. It was a bit windy, and I did not have a tripod. And I had denoise in mind when taking this. I wanted to see how far I could push denoise and see if it can handle the noise it created. Um, this was taken with a Canon 5D Mark II at 25,600 ISO, so super high ISO. Let's see if Denoise can handle it. Okay, I've already made my background copy, so we're going to go up here to Filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise 5. Now, as with all the first thing that will happen when you take your image into Denoise is the settings from the last image processed in, in Denoise will be applied to this image. So go down to Reset All just to get a fresh start. And we're already at a good auto brightness here. When you turn it off, this is the original. When you go to normal, you start to actually see that noise a little bit better. So especially when you're working with night images, keep that auto brightness at normal or strong. I'm going to go with normal. Okay, because I've already played with the image a bit, I know that raw stronger is going to be a good preset for me to start out at. Presets are a really good starting point. Um, however, sometimes you will find that you don't need to make additional adjustments, but majority of the time you'll find that you are able to refine refine that noise reduction and, and really get it to the level you're, you're looking for if you go over to your adjustment panel. So that's tip number one. You really need to get to know your adjustments. And so I'm just going to go through the process pretty quickly. With this particular preset, the raw stronger, first thing I noticed is that, is that it's a bit strong for this image. But it is the best overall preset, so it's a good starting point. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my correct black level slider and take it to zero. The reason I'm doing that is so I know what the original noise looks like. I'm also going to be doing that with the detail recovery, all of the sliders within the detail recovery tab. Let's take those down. So now we have a better idea of just the noise. Okay, first I would like to go to the Luna preview mode. And that's going to take all the color out. And I'm going to go over here to a section that just has the noise and I can really focus in on the noise. I'm not worried about how it looks for you know this particular part of the image, etc. Just take it to a, an area that you can really focus on the noise and that's it. Okay, this is a bit strong of a noise reduction, so I'm going to just take that overall strength down about 0.5 or so. It's a little bit better. And I'm going to take everything just a bit down. Adjust shadow. I'm going to take the adjust highlights down all the way. So I can start to get a little bit more detail in the highlights, which is going to be the flower petals. Okay, and when we come to adjust color red, go ahead and go to your preview mode red. So you can actually preview just the red, the red color noise. Okay, here's before and here's after. So it's already at a pretty good um, setting. It is a bit high and I want to get a little bit more detail back in there so I'm going to take that down about 0.5 again and this is nice you can see a little patches of the red noise and 
it's not completely smoothed out, but it's a significant difference, and that's what we're looking for. Same with the blue. Let's go up to our blue channel. And I'm going to take this down as well because I almost see no evidence of blue noise, and I know that it's there, so let's take that down to zero. Okay, I just start to see a little bit of the detail of the blue noise. Here's before, here's after, so I'm pretty happy with that. The clean color slider is nice because it just um, helps to refine the edges between the colors. So I always put that at about 0.2. It's a really good um, setting for that parameter. Okay, and now we are at the correct black level slider, which is very important. I'm going to go back into our RGB mode. And we're still looking at um, this area where we can really focus on the noise. As you can tell, there is a significant amount of a red color cast from the red noise that was there. That is where the correct black level slider comes in. It's going to repair the um, affected areas, that color cast, and try to, try to take it to a natural, normal level. Let's see here, I'm going to keep going up here. That's getting a little bit too blue. I'm actually going to take this over to my flower and see what's going on. As you can tell, within the center of the flower, there's a red color cast too, so it's a good place to check it out and look. Let's take this down a bit. Okay, that's starting to get um, a more natural color. We'll come back to that if needed. I'm going to come down here to my debanding tab and, and get rid of the horizontal banding that was very evident in the beginning, as well as the vertical banding. Okay, and I will show you that banding here. It's really evident down here. So before, see all the lines going horizontally across, and there are some significant uh, vertical lines as well. That's what we just solved with the debanding. Now we can go to our detail recovery slider. I'm going to take this up to our flower where we're going to be focused on the detail. And I'm also going to take this down, the auto brightness down to off so I can see a more natural effect. Okay, first we go to the Recover Detail. The Recover Detail and Reduce Blur sliders you have to be a little bit careful with because they um, have a tendency to introduce artifacts if you push them too high. So if you start to see artifacts introduced into your image after working with either of those sliders, just go ahead and back it down just a little bit and you'll see those artifacts start to disappear. So I'm going to put the recovered detail at about 0.5. And I'm already starting to see um, a lot of that detail appear so within the uh, petals of the flower. Now I'm going to take my reduce blur and just move it slightly because this one is a little bit more, it tends a little bit more to give you um, artifacts. And actually, I'm going to take that down a bit because it did introduce a little bit. Okay. Alright, we started here and we've come to this point. So it's a pretty um, nice detail within the petals. However, I'm still not really happy with the center of the flower. Now, the add a grain slider is um, the second tip today. Don't be afraid to add grain back into your image. When you're working with a noise reduction program, it is going to smooth out the edges. And with this significant amount of noise, it's going to um, definitely, and so much information removed from the image, 
you're definitely going to see a little bit of a plastic effect. Adding in grain is going to make a more natural image and it's going to give the illusion of detail coming back in, detail that we haven't been able to recover necessarily. All right, add a little bit more grain in here. Okay, and now you have a more natural image. You have reduced the noise, but you definitely have some actual texture within the image. You're not just working on a smooth, plasticky type of, of image. So that grain slider is the second tip of the day. Now, because we're kind of running short on time, let's just go ahead and take this back in to Photoshop and see what we've done. You can definitely play with it further, especially with the black levels and the, the color sliders within the noise that would help a little bit more with this image, but I'm going to do the third tip. So let's just see this one. Okay, here's where we started with a definite red color cast all over the image. And here's where we ended up. You still see a lot of detail within the petals and the center. So I think we've done a pretty good job for this extreme example. <laughs> All right, next example. This image was taken actually with film, 4x5 film. It's an extended exposure, about 45 minutes long. And the film was 400 ISO. It doesn't naturally produce a lot of noise. However, in these broad areas in the sky, you start to see some noise appear. And this was part of a series of images where a lot of sky was used within the compositions. So this is um, the third tip of the day, is when you're working on an image, Go ahead and if you have, if you're batch processing or if you have multiple images you're trying to work with um, that have the same camera and ISO settings, definitely set yourself a preset. Okay, so let's go into Topaz Denoise. And all I'm looking to do is get rid of the noise within the sky. These images we're going to be blown up into large prints, four by five feet. So with that significant size of an image, the noise is going to be evident within the sky. And that's what we're trying to avoid. OK, so say I have all of my settings correct and I'm happy with this, which I'm not happy with <laughs> this particular one. But let's just say I am. You go over here to Save. You have all of these options um, that you need to put in. You have your preset name, preset type, whether it's absolute or relative. M majority of the time, if you're working with your saving the same camera and ISO settings, you want to work with an absolute preset. You can say who it was created by, which camera you were using, what ISO you were using, what image type you were using, and then a description just to help you out if you need it. So I've already made one for this series of images called Model Home. You just click on that. Okay, so here's my after, there's my before. There is a significant reduction. Here's my after, here's my before. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to press OK. And I've saved my preset. And now my other 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 images that I took with this same type of setting, I can just apply that model home preset to. And that's tip number three. Don't only really take advantage of that. So. For example, here is another image in the Model Home series. Let's go ahead and make a quick background copy. Go ahead and quickly go into Topaz Denoise. And just click on that preset and see what happens. 
Again, I'm just interested in um, how the sky is being affected. Okay, preset. And here's before. And here's after. Definitely smoothed out the sky, yet it didn't take away all the detail. And I think it's going to be a really good preset for all of my images that have a ton of sky in them. So I'm going to say OK. And that is it for us today, folks. Um, our three tips. Don't be afraid of doing the manual adjustments. Using a preset is a really good starting point, but these light images you really need to refine with the black level correction and color sliders. Don't be afraid to add grain into your image. If you smooth it out too much, you start to get a plasticky effect. So to get a more natural night image, you're going to need to add a little bit of grain in there to. Um, make it seem more natural. And lastly, take advantage of your presets. All right, thank you so much. And please let me know if you have any questions. You can send them to webinars at topazlabs.com. And have a great day. Maybe we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.